Back in the 1950s, this was the item to have. This clunky, futuristic looking hat. Hey, I'm Alex Lamb, and in this episode of Stories of the World, we'll be talking about the Man from Mars radio hat. Now, this may look like something a child made, but back in 1949, this was what the latest technology was capable of. But before we talk about the radio hat, we need to briefly talk about the radio technology that was available in the 1950s, which will allow us to better understand why the radio hat was, well, the way it was. Now, during 1949, most if not all radios were based on the vacuum tube technology. Transistors were around during this time, but were relatively new and expensive. And it wasn't until 1956 when the first transistor radio were commercially available. So all we really need to understand is vacuum tube radios are old technology and transistor radios are the new stuff. I know some of this may seem confusing, but I promise you it will start to make sense through the video. Now we can talk about the radio hat. The radio hat was manufactured by American Mary Lee Corporation of Brooklyn, NY in 1949. The CEO of the company, Victor Hoflich, believed that a radio with innovative packaging and awesome advertising would create the company's next big success. The final version of the hat was a portable radio built into a safari helmet. Though the hat had a futuristic appearance, it was because of technical limitations. It was built on the vacuum tube technology, what explains the, you know, the clunkiness and the weird bits sticking out. On the top of the radio hat featured a loop antenna, which seemed like they tried to make stylish uh, vacuum tubes, which were a necessity because of the vacuum tube technology and turning knobs. On the underside housed all the circus built in headphone and a line running into the battery pack. The radio was able to tune into stations within a 32 kilometer radius and last up to about 20 hours. The hat was available in eight colors, lipstick red, tangerine, flamingo, canary yellow, chatrus, chatrus, <laughs> blush pink, rose pink, and tan. The hat retailed for $7.95 USD, which is about $86 in today's money. So the idea was created and all that was left was the awesome advertising. In March 1949, Hoflich held a press conference to introduce the Man From Mars radio hat. Hoflich was clever. Instead of simply talking about the radio hat, he had several teenagers modeling the radio hats for the reporters and photographers. The news about the radio had spread like wildfire. Pictures and news stories appeared appeared in newspapers from state to state. The articles typically included uh, a photo of a young woman wearing the hat and a six paragraph story. The radio hat also received widespread coverage in magazines such as Popular Mechanics, Popular Science, Radio Electronics, Life, Time and The New Yorker. The radio hat was sold in department stores and by mail order. Initially, it had huge success, but within a year, sales died down. By the end of 1955, hopefully it's admitted that he stopped production of the radio hat. Interestingly, in the following year, in an interview, hopefully it said the company was still getting orders for the hat. To be honest, with the transistor technology being phased in, I'm surprised Hoflich didn't make an improved version, ditching the vacuum tube tech and adopting to transistors. Now it makes me wonder if the radio hat could have kept evolving and evolving and then becoming a necessity in our lives. Like imagine, instead of having smartphones, we had smart hats. Right? <laughs> Though the radio hat has long been forgotten, many people have made their own radio hats. Now they use the transistor radio format, making it much more compact, but still a little clunky. Now, personally, I would love to own one of the original Man From Mars radio hats. So if any of you guys watching know someone or can point me in the direction of getting one, that'd be really awesome. Now, a lucky gentleman by the name of Max Maxfield found a mint condition radio hat. Not going to lie, I am a little jealous. I mean, look how amazing it is. It is crazy to think this was a popular item in 1949. Imagine walking into the street and just seeing a bunch of people wearing the radio hat. Anyway guys, so that's the story of the Man From Mars radio hat. If you guys enjoyed this story, hit the like button and subscribe if you want to hear more stories. Also, be sure to check out my previous videos and come chat to me as I stream daily on Twitch. I'm Alex Lamb and this is Stories of the World. Peace.